Okay, thank you for tuning in to Stampscaping 101. This is another stamp along video where I'm working with some different sky imagery. Sky imagery to me is a really important aspect of scenic stamping. Um, in terms of the scenes that I'm doing, even when, like in the scene like this, we do have sky and a sky area, it's not actually imagery, okay? But it's just a little swatch of tone up there, and it kind of sets the mood for a scene, okay? Now, in a scene like this, I could stamp out a composition like this, but in this stamp along, I don't stamp any imagery below any of these ones, okay? Because I wanted to focus it, uh, this um, stamp along on the use of imagery and how you would color them in. And it's about kind of the retention of light areas, okay? And one of the things that I talk about in this video, which I think is more important or as important as anything that I'll be doing in this scene, it's about the imagery and whatnot, it's about coloring, but it's really about what you don't color, okay? I'm retaining some of the lights of the stars in this one right here with this um, star cluster stamp, okay? In this scene right here, and this one right here, two identical compositions in terms of the imagery, different color schemes, but they're working around this cloud with sun image, okay? But you can see where I've retained some of the light areas of card, in this case in the clouds that I used around it, to reflect some of the lighting, okay? And this one right here, it's using the cloud cumulus, but I just, instead of stamping out kind of that sun right in here and working the clouds around it, I just left a blank area. And that, in a sense, creates an opening for my light source, but you can see where I've retained some of the white of the page, you know, def as defined by the cloud shape, okay? In this one right here, very obvious, leave some of the moon light but also leave some of the clouds light around it. So it's about the selective use of color, and we'll talk about that quite a bit in uh, doing this uh, stamp along video. And uh, that's one of the real key things um, that if people have any trouble with um, sky figures, um, it could be the blending of it too, because a lot of times what I talk about in this video is don't stack up, you know, your imagery edge to edge like you're stacking bricks, okay? It's about the overlapping and changing the angles. And I'll talk about how to eradicate that edge altogether if you want to from an impression standpoint. You know, you can just blot off some of the edge. You don't have to, but in getting the feel of this and creating kind of graceful transitions from one impression to the next, you can blot off the edge. But we'll talk about that later. But anyways, the main point is about the retention of light within a given space because quite often your um, sky figures are the illuminating figures within a given scene, okay? Be it starlight, sunlight, moonlight, a break in the clouds, presumably, you know, sunlight coming through it or whatnot. But that's about it, you know. It's an easy process too, and I'll show you how to do this in this um, video, is just don't use too much ink and don't do this type of application. I'll show you how to kind of blend, you know, colors in like one quadrant at a time, all right? And not doing this type of thing where you're getting kind of oval shapes everywhere. There'll be nice smooth transitions and I'll show you how easy it is to do, okay? All right, so anyways, if you choose to stamp along, I hope you have a really great time. Pause the video whenever you need to. And some of you have certain images, but this cloud with sun could easily be replaced with a moon or the stars could have been in here, anything like that. They're all used the same way, okay? And I spend a lot of time in this video with the cloud cumulus stamp because it's a really great filler stamp for other types of sky imagery that don't cover in an entire space, okay? So anyways, have a great time, have a great stamp along, and like I said, just ask any questions that you need to in the comment section, or just drop us an email, okay? Okay, we're going to do another 
another stamp along, and uh, we're going to do sky figures. Now I have a video on um, how to stamp skies, um, but we'll do it as a stamp along this time, keeping that in mind. And um, there's several different types of skies, of course. You know, you can do them all different types of ways. The previous um, stamp along that we did here was just doing a kind of a freeform sky area here. But we'll actually do some sky uh, figures today. Um, we have a moon, stars, and sun. And um, let me see, I'll stamp uh, the cloud cumulus, which is the key image uh, as far as um, skies go. Uh, for me, as far as the uh, different images that we have in the line, this one's one that you can really do a lot of filler um, areas with, you know, around. Uh, the different sky figures that um, are of a given size that won't go from the edge to the, uh, you know, from side to side of a typical, you know, card size um, format here, the quarter page or closer to like a four by six inch type of uh, card. And uh, this cloud tends to be the, the filler stamp that I use for most of that um, uh, or, I don't know, many types of applications, you know, primarily as a filler stamp, but it, all, it can also be used just as a cloud itself, in itself, you know. Um, let's see here. To get started, well, I tell you what, let's do... Okay, now, one, one of the things I'm not going to do in this um, stamp along is we're going to keep this sky-specific, okay? So where I'll be filling in a card just full of um, the sky imagery, all right? You would be doing that type of thing if you have like landscape in this space right here. So I'm just gonna do it over the entire card here. But if I were to be doing it within a scene like this, what I would do is I would just mask over this area down below and this would go up here or this would go in there, you know, making it a nighttime sky. If you do a cloud like this, it could be day or night, you know. I would guess stars like that. It would be much more of a kind of a whimsical sky, okay? But we're just going to focus on the skies to give you practice in that. And uh, tell you what, let's just start off with a real easy one. I'm going to do something like a moon in blues, okay? Because typically your night sky, you're removing the, you know, a lot of the colors that you would see uh, during the daytime with a warm um, sunlight type of uh, thing, sh you know, shining on various objects, you know, bringing out the different colors. The moonlight typically is a, uh, a cool light, and, uh, you know, if you have a moonlight shining on something you're typically not going to see, you know, all the different colors of the spectrum, okay? That's not to say that you can't do that. And in another video I go over kind of unconventional color schemes and, uh, you know, like using browns or something like that and purples and pinks in a different sky uh, setting, and uh, I don't know, for some reason I, I put that up on my Flickr account and that thing went, I don't know, it must have been used as a example or something like that on for the Flickr uh, webs, uh, website, because, uh, I don't know, it was like, I don't know, 5,000 or 10,000 views of that one scene uh, that I did of uh, the star birth. Uh, um, image stamped in browns, and then I just colored it with like pinks and other brown tones, and I think I actually used a little bit of light blue in it or something like that. It's one of my favorite color schemes um, for skies. And uh, I don't know, someone there at Flickr probably liked it. Okay, so I just stamped that at an angle just to give a little bit of drama. Sometimes you s stamp things at a slant and it gives it a kind of a visual um, kind of dynamic. Now, with sky figures, I mean, you can stamp these in black if you want to as well, but typically, um, if it's a kind of a cooler um, color scheme that I'm working on, that's usually the color 
that I stamp my sky figure in because the sky figure, in a sense, is going to be um, the illuminating light source within the scene. Okay, that was stamped out. So this is a re uh, rectangle, of course, you know, boxy in shape, 90 degree angles. Now what we want to do is we want to fill in the surrounding area, okay? What I'm going to do, I like to use the cloud cumulus for that purpose. So what, one of the things I can do if I want to, I can kind of wipe off the perimeter of this, and this is a dry paper towel, okay? And I, I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to come into it at least a quarter inch or so, all right? Now, I'm not going to try to stack this perfectly edge to edge, okay? That's going to give us give it a real boxy look. These images, land, you know, the Stampscape's line has been designed to overlap one another, okay? And that eradicates the ne uh, necessity for, you know, a lot of careful masking and uh, stamp positioners, etc., okay? One of the things, too, is when I stamped this out, what I could have done is I could have wiped off some of the perimeter of that, and that would have softened up the edges, but you can see it really doesn't need that, okay? Okay, that's wiping off the edge. Let's just stamp this in here and see what it looks like without wiping it off, okay? And that looks just fine as well. But sometimes I like to just give it a little bit of a head start in terms of the... Uh, blending aspect, like that, okay? Now here's the thing, here's the thing with the cloud cumulus. If the lighting, if this moon is right here and I'm stamping these clouds, I guess this would be underneath it. You can see how top lit these clouds are, okay? So that if I'm gonna stamp this up here, they're still top lit, right? But the moon is underneath it. So what you do is you take this cloud and now these clouds are bottom lit, right? Because that's where the light source is coming from. So I always kind of aim those clouds kind of in the direction of the, you know, the source of light. Over here, I could have done it this way too, and that would have maybe been better. But you can see, it really doesn't matter if you use this cloud this way, okay? So not edge to edge, like you're stacking up. You're not stacking up bricks, okay? And that's the tendency when people kind of first start off with uh, scenic stamping, it's kind of a weird concept of dealing with light. We don't deal with light a lot of times with um, imagery that's primarily outlines. We're just careful not to overlap them. That's where the careful masking and stamp positioning comes into play. But if you kind of get that general concept of, you know, overlapping things and thinking about light in some forms of scenic stamping, it becomes a much easier process because you're eradicating the idea or the necessity of careful placement, okay? Sometimes people feel more, you know, safer around a positioner or something like that, but, you know, <laughs> you're breaking out of the rules. You can color outside of the lines, you know, and that type of thing. So you're kind of breaking down a lot of the rules that have been set for you, you know, over your years of some forms of uh, artwork, you know, when we're going back to like kids or something like that. So when I used to teach workshops and that, you know, when people first start doing that, you can kind of see all these walls come, you know, crashing down and it's like this freeing up of uh, a lot of the processes that we've uh, kind of become accustomed to uh, with certain forms of stamping. So um, not that those things aren't still required in certain types of stamping, like with a lot of outline images, but in this one, you can kind of just break all that down and it becomes much easier, okay? All right, so that's um, the uh, Cloud with the Rising Moon large stamp and filled in with that surrounding area. Okay, now one of the things I'm gonna do is we're gonna, you know, kind of uh, mix it up a little bit. Let's do the same thing with the sun, all right? And you, when I do this, you'll see um, just how similar using any type of sky images image is, all right? Now, like in a, a scene where it's high noon or something like that, 
you wouldn't necessarily see the sun as something like a warm object in the sky. You'd see that more kind of around sunrise, more so sunset, you know, those warm tones. So let's do the sun, cloud with sun, in just a blue tone. You have a blue sky and you're looking up the sun. Well, don't look it directly, but let's pretend that um, we can look at it in this scene. Let's go about right here. This is a smaller image. There's a larger image too, but I'm picking out the smaller one just so that we have a little bit more area to fill in. This is the Bahama blue that I'm using right here, okay? Now let's go back to this um, cloud cumulus. Let me wipe off some of that um, Danube blue that I just used in there. And I'm gonna, okay, I'm gonna clean this off. Otherwise it might be confusing for you. I was just gonna use, uh, go ahead and ink that up with that uh, Bahama blue, but it would probably stamp out a little bit darker just because there is a little bit, bit of residual ink in there from the darker ink pad, okay? So, cloud with sun. Now if we had that cloud with sun in here, like I said, what you would do is you just mask this off. This is before this whole thing's been colored. Ink it up and just stamp it out like that. All right? Then you would have the cloud with sun type of imagery up here in the sky. All right? So that's how you would use that in a, in a scenic setting. But now let's go back to this cloud cumulus and let's fill in some area around it. Like I said, if you wanna kind of wipe off some of this perimeter to give it a little bit of a smoother transition, you can do that. And I should have done that with the cloud um, with sun, but I forgot to, okay? The cloud with sun's kind of stamped out a little bit more greenish. I must have had some other tone on there before I stamped it out, but no matter. Now, one of the things too is um, after I stamp out these kind of um, formats here, we'll go back in and we'll tone these in, okay? So as you're doing this with the Clown King list, just turn your um, cloud around, overlap, change the angle, okay? Now, I don't wanna overlap two inches into this cloud with sun because I'm gonna be covering up my sun. I don't wanna cover up my moon, okay? Those are basically the only two areas that you have to kind of watch out for. So ink, wipe around, watch for the direction of this too, and have the illuminating clouds um, pointing towards the sun, okay? It's top lit. So it, when it's underneath the sun, you have them top lit, okay? When it's over the sun, have them bottom lit, okay? So it's like this. All right, so we have a few more areas to fill in like that, so let's keep doing that. I'll show you something too while we're doing the stamp along. And it's a way that I like to use the uh, this cloud stamp. It makes for a really dramatic um, kind of skyscape. Okay, see this right here? Now here's the trick too with this cloud right here. We don't wanna rock this, okay, like that. Don't put too much pressure on the perimeter. I have it, kind of my finger right in the middle right here, okay? And when I do that, it gives a nice soft edge as well, okay? See this right here? Pressure in the middle. Give it enough pressure so that it stamps out, but you don't need to do it too much. All right, now that's done in a medium blue. I could have also done it in a lighter blue and it would have been much lighter. The medium blue just shows better for this video, so you can kind of see what's going on from an impression uh, standpoint. But here's what I'm saying. Again, I'm gonna stamp it out, kind of pressure in the middle, but here's what you don't do. Now, I'm just stamping on this on matte paper, but don't, this is what it looks like when you're kind of laying down some, you know, bricks, or I'm kind of pressing on the edges, okay? So that's what's happening on just this copy paper right here. Very blocky, very whatever. If you're stamping out something that's more like pop art, <laughs> you can do it that way. Okay, 
So that's a cloud with sun stamped in blues, all right? It's a real dark blue, you know, for what it's probably representing, but we'll show you what that looks like when we start adding in some tone. All right, now let's, let's see, we'll have to really clean all this off. Let's do a sunset scene using that exact same um, composition there, okay? Sunset scenes are really uh, dramatic and warm. And sunsets are also a time. And this is what I think, too. I think it's, I don't know, they tend to be, everyone loves a sunset, they'll drive out to the beach or whatever, or people are racing to get to that prime location when they're on vacation to see a sunset from somewhere. I think it's, it's like an, there's a higher level of a, kind of like an emotional content when you're looking at a sunset. I, I think it's not just because the visuals are at a distance, it's because the colored light, I feel it's illuminating all of the, the matter, the suspended matter in the space between the objects. So we're made aware of the moisture in the air, the dust, um, if you live in a big city, the smog, you know, the smog actually becomes part of the kind of the visual experience with uh, kind of some nice illumination of that smog, believe it or not. And if in years where there's been like a volcano out at sea, you know, thousands of miles away, sometimes that matter comes through and, you know, you get these incredible sunsets, you know, from all that suspended uh, matter in the uh, atmosphere or whatever. Okay, now let's see here. Um, if we're going to color a sunset, something like these tones, a sunset could be pinks too, you know, you can use that if you want to. Uh, I'm just choosing, I'm just grabbing a bunch of tones here. You can use whatever brand of inks you have. This is one, this is one of those really nice uh, aspects of the uh, the now defunct Marby line. They still have all these colors though, but they just don't have the color coded cases. Okay, those went out. I don't know what was that a year and a half ago or something like that which was a shock to us all, but luckily they have the re-inkers and you can get a blank pad, but these color codings are really nice because I can kind of lay things out like that. You don't have to have all these colors. I'm not gonna use all of them, but here's what I'm gonna do for my sunset scene. I like to go with a medium to darker tone for stamping out my image. That's because if I'm using all these colors to tone in around it, if I stamp the objects in the lightest of colors, chances are if I blend in those colors around it, I'm not going to be able to see my image anymore. That's why I like going with something like a medium tone to one of the darker tones, okay? So let's just go with an orange. You know, I would think that everyone has some kind of orange in your lineup of colors. If you don't have an orange, but you have like a distress ink, something like a brown, like this walnut stain would be fantastic. Some of the distress inks I think would be a little bit too light for this purpose at least, you know, in terms of an exercise, okay? So let's go with the orange in here. I just saw a little bit of a fleck come off my pad. No, my pad still looks pretty good here. Some of my pads are really going, getting really old at this point in time with the old cases. Of course, these are, you know, you can put whatever case there. They're not color specific, but. Okay, here's what I'm gonna do too. I was saying that what you can do is on around these images, you can kind of blot off the edge, all right? And you can stamp this out. I'll put this, I'll do this in the center this time. So you see how that kind of fades off around the edge. All right, now you don't always have to put the cloud keyness around it. I can just put some tone around that and that'll blend in. Um, 
but let's use the cloud on it because I wanted to do a little bit of a kind of compare contrast type of thing with the blue tone one that we just did. I wiped off around it. Okay, overlap approximately quarter to a half inch into the previous impression. Okay. Ink up, wipe off, and stamp. Center pressure, light pressure. <laughs> On this one I used a ton of ink. This orange is really, really juicy. Okay. I'll turn it where the billows are facing towards the light. Okay. There's a lot of detail in this um, cloud cumulus stamp, so if you're using a super juicy pen, you can even wipe off some of that a little bit, you know, in there. Orange is a color that I don't use quite as often as like something like a blue, okay? Because orange is, yeah, it's pretty specific. It's you know, if you have like an orange tone scene, we're probably talking about, you know, something very warm and, um, you know, probably around the dusk sunset time frame. Okay. Fill in perimeter here. I won't take the time to wipe off because this area on the perimeter is going to get pretty dark. Oh, let me show you something too with this um, cloud cumulus stamp that's really fun. Okay, I've been using the cloud cumulus around... Let's do two different things, okay? And let's do it in... Hmm. Let's do it in, I was going to do it in blue, but let's do something a little bit different. Okay. Now, if you would just want a bank of clouds coming up over your horizon, let's try something like, let's just do it in the walnut stain here. Okay. Let's say there's a horizon like something like this, maybe where I have a little bit more cloud space up top, okay? See this how I'm coming in here? I'm not coming in here like this, I'm kind of coming in at a little bit of an angle, okay? Just so I can vary my impressions, all right? Ooh, that looks like a real antiqued looking impression, doesn't it? Okay, maybe like a sepia print or something like that, okay? Now let's say um, this bank of clouds is going to end at some point in time, then we'll just have some sky, okay? So what I'm going to do is on the top portion of this, I'll wipe this off, okay? Like so. And that will transition into that open space up top, okay? So that how it just kind of, see how it's lighter up top right there, okay? Do the same type of thing here. Yeah, that really looks antique, which I, I think is the entire idea of the distressed inks. Okay, that would be a bank of clouds. Now you can do those in any colors. You can do it in blue if you want to. Man, that is really light. Okay, but anyways, it'd be almost a little bit too light above that. Or I don't know, that looks like a forest fire in this type of situation. <laughs> but anyways, just a bank of clouds coming up from the bottom, okay? Now, let me show you something. Let me do it in a darker color so you can see. Let me show it to you. I'll show it to you in black, actually. Black makes for a, a really dramatic looking um, sky area using the cloud cumulus um, stamp. It's because if I stamped it out in black, it would be the highest amount of contrast between the image and the um, card, okay? Can 
you can really see it, you know, what it looks like here. Okay, uh, let's see, let's grab our paper towel. And in black, I do like really wiping off the edge because it is so high in contrast. But let me show you something right here. You know how we've been working this cloud around a sky figure, okay? Like this, all right? Now here's what you're going to do, okay? You have a big open space like this, and what we're going to do is we're going to just stamp this out multiple times and twirl it around, okay? Re-ink it in between each impression, but we're going to leave a space open, all right? And that open space is like a break in the clouds, and that's going to be the source of illumination within a given scene, okay? We're just imagining there was some trees or something down below or whatnot, okay? Second impression. So this is how I'm kind of changing the angle slightly between each impression and overlapping quite a bit, half inch to quarter inch. I mean, you can't see the edges, right? The rectangle shape at all, okay? Wiping off a little bit, center pressuring, and overlapping, okay? It's not going edge to edge, you know, between each impression, okay? So here's one, and the next one, it's kind of like this, okay? See that? And the next one would be like here, okay? So let's just keep doing this. See this here? here? I just rotate my paper. That's easier than keeping this right up and going like this, and then seeing my arms out here, my hand would be in kind of an awkward space. I like keeping things like right here, okay? This is my, your natural hand placement. Next one is like that. Next one, about like that. Okay. Just keep twirling. Okay. It's like it's on a like a stamping lazy Susan or something like that. like this, like this. Don't lose track of it if you're using a kind of a unmounted die. You know, just take a peek and see where it is. I'm not being too, you know, gingerly about my wiping off. I'm wiping off a good, I don't know, half inch to a one inch, and I'm, you know, I'm taking off a pretty good amount, you know, as far as there's like pressure. I'm not scrubbing it where it's like a hundred percent off. I'm stamping, I'm just removing like, you know, a lot of the ink there, okay? All right, so we have this open area right here, and I can close it in even more like this, okay? Now maybe this cloud in the middle here would close, you know, kind of, maybe it would be a little bit lighter because it's closer to the light source, so I can remove off more ink if I want to, and especially around on the perimeter, okay? This would, in theory, be a little bit more precarious because we're going over so much area here, but just to show you how well this can blend in and how you don't have to worry about it, just plop it right on in there, you see that? There's no rectangle shape showing anywhere, okay? Because I wiped off the edge and I did center pressuring. Don't do this again. Don't rock it like this, okay? Where it's going to have a harsh edge like that, okay? All right, so we have this area right here. Even this little bit, let's say I wanted to close in this little bit. You know, I can ink it up, ink up a small bit of it like this. 
See, it's right here. And let's wipe that off with a dry paper towel, not a wet paper towel, because that would remove off everything. Okay, it's right about right here. I stamp that out in there. And there we have it. This little break in the clouds. It makes for a kind of a dramatic, whirling type of thing. And then when we add in some tone around it, it'll really look like that light is kind of, you know, shining through. Okay. That was the cloud. Now let's do something with this. Sometimes there are some images that you, I mean, you certainly could use it with clouds, but um, this one right here could just go edge to edge. Okay, this is the star cluster. It makes it for a more whimsical look. Okay, it's more like the uh, like a the Pleiades or whatever. Kind of that. What is that? How many point stars? That four, eight point star or something like that. Okay. Uh, let's do it in not too many add too much work to this, but um, uh, I love purple. I don't stamp very many scenes in purple, but uh, I like the color. So let's just do this in purple. Uh-oh. See that right there? Crumbs from my uh, stamp pad. Let's not use this one. This one's starting to disintegrate, and I can see the, uh, the wear on this one. All right. Farewell to my number 31 pale violet pad. It's time for me to get another one of those. So I get to treat myself to one of those. I'm just going to use one of my other demo pads of that one. But that pad is probably about 20 years old. I'm starting to see that happen on some of my pads here. Not with the newer ones, with this, you know, the demo ones that we have on eBay. These ones are like 10 years newer than my old ones that I've been using. These are the original pads that I think I had. All right, so that being said, let's just use this here a wine for right now. Oh, actually, I guess I like that color. I have another pale violet right here. Let's use that one. Let me check it out. Yeah, looks okay visually. Let's check it out though. I don't do too many um, scenes in uh, purple either, or do I? Sometimes I'm kind of making a point to do that. I don't know, I need to do, I, I want to get back to my, some more kind of unconventional color scheme uh, videos. Okay, star cluster, done in pale violet. See that right there? Changing the angle. This one will be more apparent as far as placement goes. Okay, see that right there? I'm changing the angle and overlapping a little bit with the previous impression. So you can even take a very rectangle-based image, and I'm not doing any filling in. I think this one would be more interesting with, you know, a little bit of a contrasting um, texture, but just to show you that you can fill in an entire area with, you know, an image other than the cloud keyless. And I'm not really bothering to wipe off around the edge. You certainly could. But on something like this, I see this as being something where I'm going to fill in a lot of this area where it won't just look like a, like a fabric pattern or something like that. And you'll see what I mean by that when we get to it. Okay. So there's a lot of different sky images there. I figured um, if you're doing a stamp along, you probably have one or two of these ones, and that way you can follow along on that one. I don't want to have like eight different videos just for a, you know a specific image, but this one's kind of a general one that you can kind of follow along with. And like I said, I can take that um, star cluster, and the star cluster could be used in place of you know, that cloud with sun, cloud with moon, you know, can go in here amongst that color scheme. You can even do that cloud with moon in a warm sunset tone type of thing. I've done this one like this in brown tones and warmer tones, and it gives it a different look, you know. Things can look more kind of whimsical than, say, 
natural, I guess you can say. And uh, that's what they do in like in animation all the time. They don't stick to kind of, you know, just straight convention of what you might see with the naked eye. And it makes it more dramatic that way and more personalized, you can say. All right, let's start off with these three right now because I can work with the certain types of tones on these ones. Let's do Summer Sky right here. Now, on these ones right here, one of the things about um, scenic stamping and um, sky figures is that you can go, these ones are very literally, you know, it's a, very, a literal um, depiction of a light source, okay? So don't tone out your moon. I mean, you can get a little bit of color on it if it's too stark white. I would stay away from that sun in here, okay? This is where um, kind of experience comes into play, but it's not, you know, you don't, it's not going to take a lot of learning right here, like a high learning curve, you know, a steep learning curve, I guess you can say, all right? Just don't tone it out. Stay away from that, okay? So it's not, you know, it doesn't take a lot of experience to say, okay, just don't do this, you know what I mean? But that's literally what it is, you know, and that's the only thing that you really have to worry about. Okay, my memento pad, I think... I mean, the summer sky is getting pretty dry, and I think I found that out the other day. So let's go with, just go with some light tone, okay? My salvia blue is fairly light, okay? So I'm going to go in here with this. I'm toning out my perimeter right here, but here's the thing. Just do selective coloring in terms of what you're toning in, okay? Remember the top areas of your cloud. Here's the thing that I want you to do. See this top area right here where it's really illuminated? Okay. I'm doing a lot of toning in like this as far as the impressions go, okay? And I'm kind of staying away from those top billows. So where this cloud ends and the other one begins, okay, this is what I'm doing in this darker region right here at the base of the next one. I'm kind of toning in it from the bottom. Over here, toning it in from the bottom. And I'm kind of leaving the top portion of it where those billows are the most lit, you know. I'm leaving them light. And that way, it looks as though they're reflecting the light coming from your light source, okay? So this right here, see it's starting to turn a little bit, and we have a little bit more kind of illumination. Okay. going with the lightest tone so far because we're going to build up into a little bit of a darker tone too okay now this is a color the salvia blue that's not too much uh, lighter than the memento that I stamped it out in okay but let's take the same salvia blue could be any color if you have the Adirondack Aqua, use that one if you have the Memento Summer Sky. If you have a Distress Ink the Tumbled Glass one, use that. Um, oh, whatever brand of pads you happen to use, use your light blue one, okay? Same thing right here, okay? This is the light blue. And remember, on some of these clouds, just retain the white of the page on them so that they're capturing and reflecting some of that moonlight, okay? It's kind of like a little oscillation. You're kind of oscillating a little bit of color and the retention of white, okay? Where you put this, there's no exact place. Just leave some clouds light and other ones make them a little bit darker, okay? Just so long as there's a little bit of variation. Here's when the beginning stamper in doing light, they color everything in, okay? 
that's what happens. Um, which, in a sense, is it's not harder, but it's more work. So just do less, I guess you, you, you could say. I mean, the correct, you know, more accurate is be more selective, you know, but being more selective does mean you're doing less inking. So just don't color as much, okay? And and see what you're doing as well, all right? This right here, I mean, if I left that cloud lighter over here and darker over here, it's not going to matter, but it's just kind of there's dark light, dark light, dark light happening all over in here. And that gives your um, scene a light source and the reflected light, okay? All right, now sometimes my moon is a little bit too stark, so sometimes I do take some of my lighter tone, this light blue, and I might run a little bit over it like that, okay? I don't want this in the middle of my moon, of course. Who would? You know, so it's just kind of putting a little bit of light stroke over it like that, okay? And that's what I'm doing everywhere. I'm just kind of lightly dabbing this, okay? I'm not doing like, like a pogo stick, okay? Like that. What you're doing is just kind of going around doing this, okay? And you can see how subtle a mark you're working with. But if I want it darker, then I just add a little bit more. But I never press in harder. And that's where you'll keep a lot of control over it, and it's very easy to do. Um, okay, now what I was going to do is this one right here. Now this one, I realize, is purple, but what is one of the components of violet and purple? It's blue, right? So I can use the same blue in here, or whatever you use, whatever blue you're using, okay? Now, here's the thing on this one. Just be a little bit selective on what stars you're, you're toning out. I'm toning out some of them, but on some of them, I might retain some of the light from the white of the page. I do like to do the perimeter fairly dark though, okay? Just to kind of create more of a vignette type of feel, okay? So it could be something like that, all right? We have a little bit of variation. Not every, all the stars are illuminated the same way is the other, as the one next to it or something, okay? All right, so this is what we look like with our first tone of blue, okay, on all of them. That will start to look a little bit brighter, same with that, and some of these stars, the darker we go, okay? So you jump to, or transition into, your next tone of blue. And I try to keep the steps going from one color to the next somewhat minimal I mean I don't it doesn't have you don't have to use 16 gradations of blue or something like that but if you have light medium and dark that's better to use the medium before you go into the dark in most cases okay okay here's the same color blue that I stamped my clouds in right and I'm just kind of applying this in roughly the same areas that I applied in this case, my salvia blue, my lightest of blue, okay? But on this one right here, I'm going to be a little bit more selective, okay? I'm gonna use less of the Bahama blue than I did with salvia blue, or if you're using summer sky, the previous one, okay? So, the most amount of toning that you're going to, going to do is with your lightest tone, okay? And see, that's all that one really needed, I think, all right? I could go darker if I want to, but, you know, maybe, you know, to frame the uh, this space off even more. This is what you'd be doing if you were doing it. Let's say there were some mountains below here or something like that, and this would be your sky portion of it, okay? Let's go into the Bahama blue right here, or my medium blue. The Marvy would be the number 10 blue, which is very similar to this one, okay? So 
See this is how I'm kind of working one area too? I'm not working it around on the entire perimeter all at one time. You kind of start in one area and you stay there and you just kind of blend it out. That's what that's how you get a smooth transition. This is how people kind of oftentimes approach it in a workshop situation on their first card. And I was always there to kind of remind them, okay, work in one area. Because what they do is, yeah, there's a lot of information if I kind of demo this and they go back and they just say, okay, get to work. People start doing this, right? No, that's how you get these types of marks, okay? So what I'm doing is I'm working one area like this. See this right here? It's darker and it gets lighter. And then I move to the next area, okay? So this is what it looks like here. Working it, kind of pulling that color in a little bit and it's also getting drier on my tip here. And then when it gets drier, I move in more towards my light source because I'm getting a lighter version of that. See, do you see what I mean? So that's where that transition or the easy, grace, more graceful transition of color comes into play. Okay, so the whole idea of this concept right here is to keep things easy and as foolproof as possible, all right? It's really hard for me to make a mistake as long as I'm not doing like that type of thing, okay? If you want to get darker, then you just kind of do more color there and more taps, all right? So we get a nice transition of value. It's kind of hard to see it on here because um, we have all that texture going on in the background. But let's do it on this one right here, okay? Let's work that same type of thing right here. I'm kind of tapping it out, okay? See, I'm working in one small, I guess it's kind of like a quadrant, all right? So we get a little bit of a darker blue out here because that's getting more coverage and more of an application. And now see, this is kind of dry on here after, I don't know, 25 swipes or something like that. So I have that drier application in what will be the lighter area right here. So that right here? Now let's move to the next area, okay? combination of taps and swipes, kind of, right? That's the second quadrant. The larger the piece of paper, the smaller the, you know, overall area, maybe instead, you know, you'd be working an eighth, you know, of the card or something like that on a half page scene, or if you're doing a full page scene, that's a lot of coloring, but you can do it. You'd be working on like a sixteenth of the uh, space at a time, okay? So this is a really light version of it, and the light version gets tapped in the lighter areas. Does that make sense? And that way it's nice and easy, okay? You can kind of keep things more irregular. It doesn't have to be just all dark and then light or something like that. Let's keep that lighter right there. How's that? Okay. Especially with a scene, you know, something like this, you know, where you just have some stars, okay? There's a lot of variation you can do. And then all of it will look just fine. There's not one way that it, you know looks more natural. This is inherently kind of an, an unnatural looking sky. It's more whimsical, you know, with those stars like that. It's looking, like, looking through like a star filter or something like that. And one of the things too. We're not always looking for photorealism, so to speak, you know. If a, fo if a camera can do something a hundred times more effective with a certain type of look, that should be the media, you know. This is much more about kind of personal expression. If green's your favorite color, do a green sky. Turquoise is a favorite color. I, I'm getting a lot of uh, turquoise uh, um, 
comes up with uh, some people. In fact, I need to do a, a Seaside Cove scene in more of a turquoise um, tone, but a lot of people love that color. Do a turquoise sky, you know? That's, you know, it's the ultimate personalization when you're kind of doing kind of a sky area, a light source coming down in your favorite color, illuminating that landscape in that tone, you know? I, lo I love turquoise too. I love uh, when you go to some area and the sea is kind of more of a turquoise, you know? Where I grew up, it was more of a... <laughs> The sea would look gray and stormy all the time, you know, because of the amount of wind up there on the uh, central coast of California. But I loved it when I see, like, areas with, like, crystalline blue or kind of a greenish tinge, uh, you know, uh, waterscape, I guess. Okay, so, all right. It's fun. All right. Okay, let's stick to those blue ones while I'm doing that. I was going to get to this uh, sunset one here. Move into your navy blue right now, okay? And this one has to be the dandy blue. In the Marvy colors, it would be the number three blue. This is a color, kind of the darker blue, I would think most of you have in your... Uh, collection of ink pads, okay? Whatever blue you happen to be working in. If you have a violet, you can do that on this one. But I haven't forgotten that this is a pink, purplish, purplish color scheme, okay? And I know I'm using the blues on it here. But you can see how the blues definitely relate to this one. It's blended in just fine and it doesn't look kind of out of character. I'll get to some pink on here. I'll show you what I do with that one later, but let's go with the uh, dark blue here. Okay. Kind of getting a little bit more perimeter oriented. When you get into the, your darker tones, you're just, you're not using them as much, unless you're going for a really dark scene. Okay. But on this one, you know, it's about these clouds up here. So remember when you're adding on your first color to the first color gets the most amount of coverage. When you get down to your, you know, with each, um, color that you're working in. If you're kind of going up this value scale into the darker tones, the darker tones, you know, you know, it's just a little bit here and there. Most of the times it's on the perimeter. I go four quarter corners with it and that's all you really need. So don't think, you know, with the, after the first color, oh my gosh, this is going to take forever. You know, the, this last color, I don't know, what was that? one minute or something like that. And I think that's all that one really needs. Something like that. But see where that retention of light comes into play? And it's easy to do, you just don't tone it out, okay? But that's where people talk about if they're having difficulty with that. And that's usually just when they're learning how to apply colors with that, you know, on their first scene. You know, they think, okay, I got the flow of it, but oh, I forgot to retain the lighter areas in here. It's just being a little bit more selective and putting on the brakes more than, you know, them, anyone going off the rails and doing something where they shouldn't, you know, shouldn't have, okay? So the practice is really just doing less, just don't do as much, you know? That's where the kind of the refinement comes in, leaving some lighter areas down here, okay? Or throughout the scene, and that's usually you kind of define that with your lighter tones, okay? Lighter tones, but that doesn't mean you want this whole area to just be untouched, okay? Just put in some very pale versions of whatever color you're working in, and it becomes a very, you know, uh, uh, easy process. Just take your time, you know, don't rush it. Don't rush into like this color too fast, okay? Take most of your time with the lighter tones, and then when you get to your darker tone, it can just be a very minimal application in many ways, okay? On this one right here, I'm just kind of going on the perimeter and making this perimeter 
If you make the perimeter, or an area of your card, one step darker, you'll make the light source or the lighter things in the scene one step lighter, okay? By contrast. So we have that nice passage of light coming through there. There's our sun in there. You could warm it up a little bit if you want to, but don't use a really super bright yellow or something like that. Use a very pale one, okay? That's another thing too. People often think, okay, I want the sun yellow, but it really wouldn't be yellow. You don't see it like a high noon yellow in this scene. It's, it's more just like a pure white light, you know, like a light bulb. You see these things that say natural light or something like that. It's not yellow, okay? The yellow one would be more around sunrise or sunset, okay? And we'll do that on that scene. Okay, now here is the this violet-toned scene, okay? Let's take some of this orchid here, or whatever pink. If you, if you have a pink, use some of that pink in there, okay? And I'm applying that. You can see where I'm adding this orchid in here, this orchid over the top of blue doesn't look orchid, right? It's because the colors underneath are always going to show through when you're talking about dye-based inks, okay? And you can go for a little bit of variation. I'm just kind of using some here and there. I like my perimeters a little bit darker to kind of create a vignette effect. Okay, that was orchid. Let's let me see if I have a... I don't know where all my pinks went. Now, well, here's a really super bright pink from Marvy. Right, let's go ahead and use it. Okay, see how extreme that is? Let me tone that down a little bit. Let's take a little bit off, okay? And do that that way. This Marvy ink is kind of a thinner ink, <laughs> and this pink especially, it, it, it penetrates very quickly, okay? So I got a little bit more of a darker pink there than I wanted to. But see, I'm kind of blending it out a little bit. Oscillate it. We'll use some, a little bit here and a little bit there. I'll add it to my darker regions, which is the, are the perimeter, is the perimeter of the scene. There's a lot of variation in here, right? Because I used a lot more pink over here than on the other side. Let me add in a little bit more in there. And I'm kind of working around some of those stars in there. If I want to put a little bit of pink in there, I can. Something like that. And I keep using this because there's that much pink right there still in the tip. And using that kind of drier version, and using eh, kind of a medium pressure, but not hard pressure, I am getting some application of that color in there, okay? All right, so that was pink. Let's take a look at, uh, where's my beautiful Prussian blue? Okay, Prussian blue is really, really dark. And it really applies. It really applies quickly to a scene, no matter how much ink is down there. I don't know what it is in the Prussian blue, but it just always seems to do that. Okay, kind of corners. I call this tipping my edge, okay? 
to this right here. I'll show you how much I'm using on here. See that right here? I'm using kind of a lot of it off my page, okay, like that. And I'm kind of pulling it in each time I'm doing this little bit like that, okay, but I'm starting off here like this, okay? And then as this gets drier, I come into the scene a little bit more, but it's with a very light touch. And that's how I get those edges like that, nice and transitioned as opposed to I'm not getting a hard edge like that right there. And it's because I'm doing more of like this type of touch right here with a dry brush, okay? See this right here? That transition right there? That's what you're kind of going for, okay? So you're just kind of feathering it in. And <laughs> Now, the easiest thing to do, too, is if you don't want to have to have so much control over this, then just take a lot of the ink off before you even go on there so that you're using a much lighter version of whatever ink you're using, especially like that Prussian blue is really, really, uh, that pad is really super juicy because it's so dark. And my dark tones, I don't tend to use as much because they're more perimeter oriented. So, boy, I mean, I haven't re-inked some of those darker tones in... I might go years without re-inking some of those darker tones, like reds, like super dark reds and things like that. I just, I don't know, I just don't use them too much. Okay, so that is the uh, scene as that, as, as that exists. I do like that blue here. I know a lot of you don't have Prussian blue, but whatever kind of darker version you have. Now, if you want a little bit of practice here too, one of the things you can do, and I can do it on this scene right here, but I don't think I will, is you can use black, okay? If you want a little bit of practice. Now, with the darker tones, remember, why don't you just blot off a few times? Take off a lot of the color before you start going on here. Now, that scene is already fairly dark, so one or two taps, one of the tendencies is I can't see anything. Wait a minute, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nothing, you can't see anything. Now, you might have taken off too much or your pad might be not as juicy, but here's the tendency. People will go like this, one, two, three, four, five, and then I can't see anything, then they go like that, and then you have that shape sitting there because it squeezed off too much ink. So you just stay with it. Get it down in 20 very light taps, okay? It's very easy on your wrist just doing like this, but you also will have a lot more control over it and you won't be rushing anything. So you won't get, this is the way you don't get those kind of unexpected, unintentional marks, okay? Because each tapping isn't creating like this really super um, spontaneous mark, like calligraphy or something like that, or watercolor, you know, watercolorists are awesome, but <laughs> It's something that I'm not very good at because they just, you know, you make a mark, you have to really commit to it because it is there, it's very visible, and you're just kind of going with it. All right, so there's the darker blue around the edge, and I think that makes my moon stand out even lighter by contrast, okay? This is my sun, all right? tiny area. This scene doesn't get as dark as my stars or something like that, but you see I'm just tipping the edge right here, okay? This is the amount of ink on here. Watch this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 15 taps and I get that very light version, okay? And that works for me. It works for me from a kind of a real feathery graceful application. See, that's right next to the sun, so I don't want to have that right in here, okay? Okay, if you're stamping along with me, I hope I'm not going too fast. I guess the process for me is like really slow because, you know, we're taking our time working on that. 
All right, now let's do the same concept. Let's go back to our warmer tone scene right here. Actually, this one right here, in reality, a lot of times I'll go with a brown because this looks really like super electric, right? You know, in terms of the uh, the warmth of the uh, the scene. Let me see if I have a clean tip right here. Some of these tips came out of my demo box, so they're a little bit. This one actually is hard. This is probably a 15-year-old tip. Let me see if I can use this one. This one's starting to delaminate a little bit right right here. This isn't my dip. It was it was used on the demo table. And uh, that never happens with, uh, you know, my tip that I'm using here. But it happens, you know. People get kind of used to it. And it's that thing where I'm talking about where people try to rush it too much and they're pressing harder. And that that happens, your tips are going to kind of suffer a little bit more wear. So just, you know, it's, I don't know, it's kind of about applying things kind of in a nice, you know, incremental fashion. All right, so I tell you what, I was going to go with the Marvies here. Let's use, this is too hot for me. It's too electric. I'm going to tone it down here. This is what I love brown tones for. This is, let's try to use a distress ink in here. The distress ink, this one's a tea dye and it's a very, small commitment in terms of um, value. And that's getting a pretty strong saturation. But when you start applying it with a sponge tip like this, you know, it's not applying in such a, um, a solid fashion. So, okay, now what are we looking for here? We're looking for tone, but we're also looking for a little bit of illumination on some of these clouds right here, remember? So just don't tone out all of your clouds. Leave some where there's retention of the point of the paper. Which ones you choose to do is all up to you, you know? And you can just start applying it down. You don't have to, it doesn't have to be planned out or anything like that. Just don't do them all, okay? Now, whatever you do in this first color, you're just going to follow up with additional tone in those given areas. So your first color, which is hopefully a very light one, hopefully you don't have just like red to go into or something like that. Um, I hear someone coughing in the distance. We have company over. I hope you're not picking up too much of that. Anyway, okay, so see, I've retained some of the lighter tones right there. Now, just with your other colors that you're applying over the top of this, don't touch those area, white areas there. You've already established your lighting scheme, and it's as simple as that, just leaving some areas light, okay? And you don't have to know anything about lighting or something like that. Like, okay, if that sun was there, would that cloud be light or would that one be light? It doesn't really matter at all. Just oscillate it and it'll look natural. Okay, this is a pink. Ooh, this one was uh, rosemary and this pad's looking pretty bad too. And again, these pads are like 20, oh, probably, they're probably over 20 years old. And they've had a lot of use, if you can imagine, or as you can imagine. All right, so this is just a very light tone too. You can use another brown, it could be another distress ink or something like that, but kind of red, you know, pink is a version of red, right? And red is a component for orange. And it can all work on here. Just stay away from those areas of light that you've retained in the first color, okay? And that's all you have to know about lighting, okay? Just don't tone everything out, okay? And don't get impatient. Just let things develop. Um, uh, I was going to say naturally, but it's not really natural. It's just, uh, you know, um, let it develop in a gradual way, okay? Here's the walnut stain here, all right? Or should we use yellow? Walnut stains a little bit darker than yellow, so let's uh, let's use some yellow. It'll be really bright. Okay, now this is going to be really bright, 
It might be too bright, so I'm just going to tap some of it off. Just start applying it in some of these areas. It'll warm up some areas. Now maybe I do use some of this, a little bit of it, on some of those white pillows, you know, just to warm those up a little bit. And I'll put a few around my sun. I'm going to retain some of that, some of those rays as is. I'm going to be really careful not to go around that sun after my first couple tones too, okay? All right. I don't have to apply it everywhere, but you can see some areas a little, a little, or a, a, a little bit warmer than others. Okay. How about some brilliant yellow? Okay, it's a little bit more of an orangey yellow. Boy, this pad is really juicy. You can tell. I can tell. I can always tell which pads. I, I don't, or colors, I don't use as much. I do love the color, but I just don't use it quite as much. Okay. Battery change. I think my batteries are holding less of a charge these days the older they get. They're, they're really going to work out, though, with these videos. Okay, this is ochre. Okay. If you have something like that, or an orange, or like a rust, or something like that, that would be fantastic on here. Any type of brown tones, you can work all your brown tones, but just in general, what I'm doing is I'm generally going from light to dark, so you don't have to do it by, like, hue, just do it mix and match, you know, if you have a, this is like a, I don't know, Kind of a medium tone, a, medium, a lighter medium, okay? This is the orange that I think I stamped out the, uh, the cloudless sun in. Adding more of that, okay? You always want to use the color that you stamped out the sky figure in. You always want to use that same color to blend in at some, in, at some point in the process, okay? Because that kind of merges everything together a little bit more. Okay. It doesn't have to be a lot. All right. Terracotta. A little bit more of a reddish orange. And I tell you what, uh, let's just go ahead and go, let's go with red. I wasn't going to use red. I thought, eh, maybe it'll look more kind of earthy, smokier without that red and that super red here. So see what I'm doing? Following my own advice, I'm blotting some of it off because it was just too... What color was that? Too cherry red. Okay. Let me show you how I'm doing it. See this right here? Most of it is off. I'm just using a tiny little bit of that. And then this is getting drier and drier on here. And working it in. Okay. So I don't have to use that full cherry red, but it's very much a very dry version of it. Okay. And that's right there. Okay. Now, here's where I think all of this will really come together a little bit more. Okay, let's go and let me try to take off a lot of this ink off of here. All right, and let's go to kind of a smokier, warm tinge. Let's go into the browns. I love the colors in here, but I don't like them as a final kind of statement, okay? Um, I like it more of a like an earthy warmth, okay? This right now, the intensity is so high in terms of the uh, the brightness of all the colors. I have to kind of just tone them down where I have the richness of the colors, but they're just not quite so hot, you know, of a color. And that would be the intensity. This brown tones tend to give things a little bit more of a smokier kind of natural glow than like a 
the real hot colors kind of look kind of like a create more of like a vibration, you know, than a glow. I like more of the glow. Okay, here is a Marvy Brown. Okay, that was the walnut stain, the distress thing. So you can kind of work through a, you know, a series of. I really like. Now, if I was to recommend um, a color or colors from Marvy, there's, I don't know, there's about maybe 10 of them that I really like. But if I was to narrow it down even more and pick maybe five, number six brown would definitely be one of them. I use it all the time. I like the number 18 dark brown as well. But this number, f uh, this number, um, six brown is one that kind of I don't know it makes a lot of color schemes work I use it in grass over the top of brown I mean greens all the time and it kind of mellows out kind of that hot vibrate vibrating green look I don't know if you can tell can you see this is now if I had more distressings too um, that might work as well but I find that the Marvy inks penetrate a little bit faster. And I don't know if you can tell, it's kind of getting a little bit more mellow and kind of this smokier feel. It's more of an earthy, I guess, I guess warmth in here, especially with all that very vibrant orange, okay? Oh, here's one of the, I'm gonna show you something else as well in here. I'm adding quite a bit of tone in here, like so. And I'm gonna show you a trick that I do with that same cloud cumulus when you can't see very much of the cloud anymore. There's one extra thing that I do with that in terms of an, using impressions, okay? So if you're doing this, you're just kind of adding a little bit more tone as we go. I mean, you can stop at any time. That was the brown. This is the number 18 dark brown. Okay, if you have any kind of dark brown, you can give it a try. Test it on a corner. Ooh, that looks pretty dark, right? And my pad must be super juicy. So I'm gonna blot it off a few times and then take it in. See how I'm just working one area. I'm not kind of going all around like that, 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 you know, you just kind of work it from one little area like that. And it'll give you those, those nice transitions like so, okay? And they're not abrupt because you want to use the drier version of this. Um, more than you do the fresh inked up version, okay? Fresh inked up version, I'm kind of stamping it way off the page and then working it in. So this is how I'm using kind of a dry brush for a lot longer than I do a, an inked up one. Meaning I'm not re-inking this quite so often, especially with the darker tones. Okay. Okay. Work that corner. It's not even really a quadrant, okay? It's just working a little corner, so I'll show you where I start on this one, okay? I'm not rushing it either. I'm just kind of starting on a little corner, and I keep tapping. I'm not, now, don't kind of resist the urge to press harder, okay? And that way, you'll get this nice, very easy, graceful transition here, okay? Like that. Now, if you do want to go, sorry, like that. Okay, because this is very dry on here and I keep going like that. Okay, I want to go a little bit darker on this corner, so I'll add a little bit more there. Okay, all right, but see on this perimeter, right over here, we can't really see the shape of the clouds out here anymore, right? because we've used so much tone in there. Here's a trick that's an option for you. You can take the cloud cumulus stamp again, all right? And this time, I inked it up with that dark brown that I just used around here. 
going back to our exercise right here. We're just wiping off the edge, okay? The billowy edge. Okay, and I'm taking this and about this far into the scene, okay? Now I've wiped off a lot of this part up here, okay? Take this like this. You're stamping kind of wet into wet, so kind of hold this down a little bit longer. Because you want that ink to transfer. Okay, and you get that. See that transition of value? Okay. We're getting a lot of space. You know how in um, other scenes I like to stamp foreground imagery darker, right? And it's often something different than the main scene. Well, I guess in this one you can call the main object would be probably that sun, but the clouds are something. But see, by doing these clouds darker, they look closer to us, don't they? It looks like there's some visual depth right here with the use of value, okay? So that's what you're kind of doing. You're kind of creating um, some spatial depth within the scene with the use of the same imagery, but just in a different value or in a darker value. Right. See how that kind of creates that space. And it pushes that sun to the background a lot more. From a visual standpoint. Don't forget to kind of turn your, or make your impression with your cloud. Remember to always kind of take a look at it before you stamp it out. I do. Looking at it. Things you can do is you can kind of go back into where did that tip go? Yeah, here we go. Here's the tip. This is really wet, and I wouldn't do this right now. Normally, I would let this kind of set up, but after I stamp out those dark brown clouds, I like to go back in and add a little of that color back in there. Now, I say I usually wouldn't do this right now because those impressions are wet and I don't want to just eradicate those images because it's so wet I can, you know, I might blur them a little bit, but I'll try to be careful here and just tap very lightly into it, okay? Passage of light at, I don't know, dusk. It'd be a very, I don't know, it's almost like we're looking at the sun through like a, you know, like volcanic ash or something like that, you know. But, I don't know, it is fun stuff. Oops. Some of my acrylic blocks just fell on the floor. Okay, this one right here is just using black, all right? And I think that looks pretty good as is. But let me show you just how fast something like this one can come together, okay? I still wanna do that same idea where that looks like there's light coming through there, but here's the thing, again, 
avoid that type of application of ink. Okay, but watch how fast this can come together. Okay, it is 10.32 a.m. where I am. Let me see how long this takes to tone in. See, this is a real light touch. See, this is this is black right here that I'm working in, and it's not a super dry Marvy black right here, but this is what I'm working in. It's more of a 10% gray, 5% gray, with because I'm tapping it with such a light touch, okay? There's no wear and tear on my tips at all with this type of touch, and if I want to go darker, I'm just going to add more, a little bit more tappings of it, okay? I'm not trying to rush the process and like, oh my gosh, it's not dark enough. Let's go with this, you know. But see, it's starting to get a little bit lighter in there. The darker you make the area around it. Normally, I know I do have people start off with light and they work darker, but there's something that you can do that's kind of, you know, to build up a color glow. This is just working very, you know, as monochromatic as you can get, I guess, with black and white. But it's kind of like I'm, what I'm doing is I'm achieving those gray tones right here, okay? Just with the use of less ink. It's a drier application of it, okay? It's kind of directing the lighting a little bit. Remember I talked about those billows and keeping those top billows a little bit lighter. And where the next cloud begins behind it, I'm kind of toning that in from the bottom up, but leaving those top billow clouds lighter, like so. Get a little bit of that gray tone in here, kind of separating those clouds up a little bit. Okay, now on the perimeter, let's, let's make it a little bit darker, okay? So I'm going to add more of a darker more full application with black. Tipping the edges, four corners, okay? Don't rush it though. Just still kind of blend it in. You don't want to have like this harsh oval shape there. Isn't that kind of a fun look? Let me create a little bit more separation right here. Let's put a little bit of tone in here. Let me show you something that's really fun too. I love that look right there, by the way. I love black and white photography. I love old movies in black and white. I don't mind the colorization of them, but I, I just, you know, those ones that are colorized, I tend to just, I like watching them in black and white though, better. Um, I love black and white photography. I like color too. So it's not like an either or for me. But I do want those, that old antique look. Okay. We have kind of a grayscale type of scene right here, right? Now, do you know those um, 
colored tints that you used to be able to get for like black and white photos or whatnot. You can go into something like this and take a very light tone. Let, well, that simmer scan is a little bit dry. Let me see if I have some in this Adirondack Lights Aqua. Okay, now one of the things about tints, okay, photographic tints, is that they were very light, okay? Because the reason being is that because all the grayscale tones and values were already defined in the photograph, it was just a matter of them wanting a little bit of color in them. So you don't want to have too dark of a color, so you can either go with whatever lightest blue you have, or whatever color you like. If you love green, then go with green. But don't go with a Christmas green, go with a very light green. If you don't have it, then take whatever color you have, or whatever value, and blot it off a few times so that it becomes drier and lighter before you apply this in. But look at look at this tinting right here. This is just your Adirondack Lights Aqua. It's a very light blue, but you can change the temperature. Instead of just value right here in terms of light and dark, you can introduce temperature into it and thus increase kind of the, the visual language of the surface, okay? You, if you've entered temperature into the mix. Be sure and kind of retain some of your lighter areas though, but you can get a little bit of this, like a blue or whatever color you're working in. You know, you can go with a brown, it looks more like a sepia, 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 whatever, um, tint. Okay, let's see this one I'm adding this in. I hope this is getting picked up on the camera. But it just gave that grayscale a little bit more visual richness, okay? Doesn't mean it's better, it's just different, you know? Somebody might not like the cool tones or something like that, but See that gray in there? It's a little bit more, I don't know, complex? Just in a very simple way though, just by putting in a little tint. Okay, let's recap here. The cloud cumulus tends to be a good filler stamp, just like grass would be for bringing grass textures together or land elements together, okay? It fills in certain areas. Um, you don't have to use it anywhere, like I said, the sky could be a sky like that, but what's going on in here in terms of that streaking and the blending of tone, that's what typically is going on in here, but I just have that cloud behind here, okay? Blending colors together, changing the angles from one impression to the next will eradicate, you know, the potential for um, edges to be showing. You can blot off your edges before stamping them out, you know, like that, and it gives it a lighter um, perimeter and potentially an easier transition into the next impression if you just keep doing that, all right? You don't always have to do that though, um, because they do blend just fine. Don't rock your stamps either, and don't stack them like bricks, okay? Oscillate it a little bit, you know, from one impression to the next. <laughs> I mean, these clouds and sky figures too. I think that, you know, if you kind of introduce sky figures into your, into the mix, okay? And your utilization of them, and your selection of colors that you choose to go with, I think that sets the tone for the mood of a scene. More than anything else, more than the imagery, it's it's kind of the colors that you use. And oftentimes it's what's happening up in the sky. You can have a you know, a scene of a cabin in a meadow in the forest or something like that, but that's not inherently the thing that's going to be setting the mood. It's going to be what setting you put it in. Is it nighttime? Is it winter time? Is it springtime? You know, um, 
is there a forest fire nearby turning the sky kind of an ominous glow or if you have a solar eclipse or something like that you know that's kind of setting the mood for a scene so and this is one of the beauties of sky imagery is you can have a certain scene like say the cabin with fence right here and I can have the cloud with sun up above it you know some clouds now I would I don't know if I would do greens down here, but this scene above this cabin, you know, and changing the landscape, that would have one character to it. I can have the sun above it or something like this, you know, above this cabin up here, and that looks totally different, right? I would bring some of these colors up, you know, here and just to make them match, but I'm talking about just a point. I can use, just to switch this around and it could be you know, a moon over the cabin. Again, the greens would probably be blues or something like that, but you can really change the effects and the mood and the character, completely change the character of any stamps that you have just by changing your color scheme around. And the skies, you know, are often kind of dictate what color scheme or what kind of colors you might want to use with it. Although I did mention, you can really change it around and make it more whimsical. You can make it a turquoise moonlit scene or a turquoise sun or something like that. And just really personalize your scenes for what kind of mood you want to depict or what mood you're feeling at the time to stamp out, you know? You don't have to be, you know, bound by a blue sky, green grass, and brown cabin. You know, do anything you want. So it really opens up the possibilities and uh, it really changes the scenes altogether. So uh, anyway, that's my take on sky imagery and when I think about it and I'd really recommend uh, trying them out, playing around with them in different ways. And you can also mix and match. I can have some cloud with rising moon with some stars around it. Yeah, you wouldn't really be able to see the stars in a full moon night a lot of times, right? But who cares? You know, just mix and match. You can have the sun up here in a field of stars or something like that, you know? It can turn it more into like a deep space image. It doesn't have to be, you know, if you're stamping sky. <laughs> who says yours? you have to stamp earth, you know? You could have two moons or whatever, or stars and a sun or something like that. You can do all kinds of different color schemes. And that's the fun thing about stamping. They're your own worlds, you know, to kind of, you know, to explore in terms of, you know, the creation of them or, I don't know, just going for it with whatever you want to do and uh, playing around with, um, I don't know, the different realm of possibilities, you might say. So um, the skies are really where it's at for me. Um, another one of the things that I often mention to people is no matter what's going on in my landscape down below, kind of the thing that it's really more about is it's more about the colors and the uh, what's going, kind of going on up in the sky, I think, you know, in terms of uh, the, the mood of a scene or whatever. So I don't know. That's that's my take on it. I, I spend a lot more attention to uh, uh, lighting and things like that. Um, within a scene, um, no matter what's going on in my landscape or no matter what I've stamped out. So I don't know, that's kind of my, my, my focal focus of attention is probably more leaning towards, even if it's a little small area like this up here, it could just be a swatch of some tone in there, but just bringing some of that tone down here and those colors that are uh, kind of uh, replicated across my imagery, it's, again, it creates the mood, so. Selective use of color, retaining your light areas. Just remember to do that um, when you're uh, kind of defining your uh, sky areas, okay? Anyways, thanks again for watching. Hope you stamped along with me and had some fun. And if you have any questions or any run, in, run into any kind of difficulties or whatever, always just drop a note in the comments section or drop us an email and I'll get back to you as soon as I can.